and that went from um, zero to investing billions. Literally, this is a crazy story. But he was saying that um, Africa will become one in the top 10 or even the top five of the most wealthy country economy development and technology te technologically so it's just a matter of time before it gets where it needs to um, uh, go africa and what i believe is that the diaspora that are coming back can only fast track it a little bit and uh, because the diaspora knows we have lived like uh, hundreds of yeah. years here, mm -hmm. we yeah. know we know these people over here. The mm -hmm. reason why we can make YouTube videos and say what we want to say is because we know this kind of people. You know, yeah. uh, nothing is happening. So mm -hmm. uh, what I believe is that the diaspora can only let it go a little bit faster. But yeah. the fact is that in in like 10, 15 years, 20 years, Africa will become one of the leading country and um, continents in the world, in economy, economy and um, development and all those kind of things. So, yeah. you know, I see this kind of things. I see this okay. kind of things and I talk also with people that mm -hmm. are really doing it. They are really doing big, big, big things. And I believe that um, this is also what I've seen is that the um, the most important thing is that everyone that goes needs to go with a blank mind because today is not tomorrow. And also for Africa, today is not tomorrow. Every day that goes, it will grow. It will become better. And sometimes it will take a while for the eye to see the whole picture, but it will it will happen. And this is more for you know the diaspora that is going back over there. If That's you right. ask me, That's right. it, yes. If you ask me, I would say is um, join the local people, join forces, partner up. Those those kind of things to make a big impact with what we have over there right now because we have to work with what we have and try to magnify it and scale it do i does it make sense what i say oh, absolutely you make sense absolutely you make sense you connect with us let's yeah. because i believe i believe africa is much on the world the yeah. world is where it is because they sacrifice us yeah you know and yeah. we must prosperity everywhere yeah. And so the, the, the diaspora coming is a huge link. Yeah. We come with a lot of information, a lot of work ethics. Mm -hmm. You know, we say that this is the continent that we must build. It's not because that we, oh, we left and we are not able to build it. No, we went through a lot of atrocities, <laughs> a lot of invasions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's even a miracle. I think it's a miracle for Africa to still be in existence. Exactly. A miracle. Exactly. Exactly. Because the agenda was to wipe everybody out. You know, look at South Africa. Yeah. Um, at least if you didn't see what happened in the in the 1900s, look at South Africa, look at Namibia. You know, so so that was the agenda. So we, for us to even be alive and to keep going, it's a miracle. So all of us must say that this is it and we must develop it and, 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 and create a prosperity everywhere, not only even on the continent, everywhere. So we want to see Haiti, Haiti uh, prosper, Jamaica prosper. You know, those in America prosper. They must be the one making decisions. Yeah. It can't be just Barack Obama is just one black person who is a president. No, going forward, there should be a lot of black people becoming president in America. After all, yeah. sacrifice them to build that. England is the same. You know, Holland is the yeah. same. But yes. after all, would those institutions work? Just as we said, the next 20, 30, 40 years, those institutions will start to come down. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what I was always saying to uh, the people, like um, here in the Netherlands, you know, there's always a little bit of friction, you know. Mm. But what I always used to say to um, everyone is, you know, 
you guys are lucky. You know why? Because look how Mama Africa is taking care of everyone in the world and and we have to fight look how we have to fight we are the per we are the people that are born rich we are the only nation that can say that we are born rich but you can see it you know but brother i believe we are the only one that are born millionaires the black people are the only people on earth that are born from baby millionaires and richer no one wow. no one wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i always say this to them you know so let me go to the next question okay oh i um i already answered it okay someone here wants to uh, return to the motherland to trade in gold where do we start okay <laughs> so uh, i believe that they know the industry already so there are places there are all kind of there are all kind of um, people in the gold industry there are the small a miners there are the middle there are the major ones uh if you only want to trade in terms of just selling it without going into the mining there is a pm there's a mineral commission there are institutions that do this uh Dar darko i will be back in just 10 seconds okay if you can explain it i will go to the toilet fast fast no problem okay so there are there, there are institutions that uh, that they they commission or they have they are regulated that they help people who trade in uh in the in in gold it's a whole there there, there is also a government uh, ministry that helps people to do that so is if you're going to go into the mining then there are regulators that you have to uh I think that the, the setting up a mining company requires a lot of capital. So if you're in the position to do that, uh, when you come, you can just go. But you can also go through the same thing with the GIPC that we talked about. But if you just want to buy gold and, and, and sell, then there are institutions that you can deal with. There are also miners who, who sell gold to people. There are Indians who buy gold. There are Europeans who buy gold from the same small scale uh, companies. And there are Chinese who do the same here. Uh, what you have to know is you must know the trade because there are a lot of problems <laughs> if you have not mastered the trade. You know, gold industry everywhere can have challenges. So you must know uh, what you're getting yourself into. But once you get into the hands of people who are trustworthy, um, it's possible. You just have to make sure that you're doing it properly so that the government can cover you. You know, so there is a there is a. Uh, precious mineral commission or something pmc i've forgotten the name but you can you can google it there is a there's a commission that does that uh where they give you uh, the doc, the right documents so that you can take gold and sell outside the country okay 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 so um it's possible it's but it's possible to uh do the gold and can you help the people if they want to go into gold uh, it's not it's not something that I know so much about. So when they come, they can easily go to the government arm. That one you're protected. They can give you proper documentation because the gold industry, uh, you know, can be nasty <laughs> if you're not careful. Yeah. Because it's money, you know, it's money. So you must know the trade. You must know. Unless you want to go into it, get a concession, set mm. a whole plant, mm. and mine yourself. You know, go through the whole processes. You get your gold, and then you can you can ship. Uh, you can you can forward it. Somebody is saying something. I want to know. He said that be careful not to simply say people selling on the street are being industrious. In most cases, it's a, a lot of young kids with good education reduced to due to lack of jobs. Uh, who? who is this statement? The last but one. The last one. Yes, uh, Mochi T. Okay, so that one, uh, what he's saying is that, uh, no, we are not talking of the kids selling on the street. We are talking of adults selling on the street. A kid selling on the street, I, I don't support that. But we're talking of adults selling on the street. Um, mm. It's better than them waiting for somebody to give them uh, a handout. Yeah, and that's what we're saying. We were just comparing to say that somebody in another country, which the government is taking care of, 
You can't say that that person is better off than the person who's trying to feed his or himself, himself and his family. No. So for me, it's not so much lack of jobs. Mm. That is also work, isn't it? Mm. Selling is work because I know people who have gone through that and now they have their they have their shops. Mm. You know, so not everybody is selling their act. Uh, see, mm. when we think only in terms of jobs, then it will be. But if you think of business as a training ground for business, mm. um, there is a there is a lot that you can learn because business is selling, isn't it? You know, and and selling skills. Yes, it could be dangerous, but where is not dangerous? It's better the person gets up to do something for themselves than to wait for help. Mm. You know, and I would not say that it's just because of lack of jobs per se. A lot of the times is is what the people uh, process in their mind. Exactly, exactly. And you know, um, what I've seen is that at entrepreneurship, you can learn the most by doing it. Yeah. Because after you went to school or after you done the book, the theory, mm -hmm. you need to do it to get the, the actual experience. So yeah. what I've learned is that you can, the best school is the school of doing it. Exactly. So, um, so exactly. I, I just, you know, I just wonder what you said before is the standards, you know, mm -hmm. according to whose standard, <laughs> act, you know, so it's the standard. I, I believe this. Mm. Okay, mm. let's um, let's let's get um, everything in Africa is slow. Is this right? Uh, I'm not sure. Everything is uh, in Africa is not that slow. They told you it's slow, and you believe it. No, but uh, in Africa, um, <clears throat> what I've seen is that. It's not slow. It's really not slow. And um, the areas where the standards are, um, where they can move in the standards of Africa, Af of Ghanaian people, it's high. So what do I mean with this? If you see the taxi in the Netherlands, for a taxi to arrive and pick you up, it will take like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But in Ghana, you only need to do like this and it stops. So it's fast. Okay. It's fast, you know? So it depends what you want. And if they don't have it, it's slow. But most of the things that is important, like the, the going from point A to point B, it's fast. The food, if you want fast food, you only need to go outside and you will have like enough food to eat. You have everything over there. I, I really, I think Africa is, Ghana is good. It's not so. Ghana is it's good. Not so. If you go to, if you ever went to those who are on the sea fishing, or if you go to those who are in the cocoa farms, farming, yeah. or you go to the mining fields and you see how the people work there, mm. it's not so. It's only when you are in Accra, you go mm. to a restaurant and some girl is a bit slow, or you go to some office and they are trying to be slow. Then you say that, oh, in Africa, everything is slow. No, it's slow when you compare us with your system. Then you say that, yes. But we're not so much slow. And don't forget that, for instance, in the West, America. America was built on the humanization of a whole generation, of a whole race. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. reduce them to animals. They will make you do things just like animals. Now, you think that they didn't carry those things into management of businesses? I think a lot of the management structures that we have around the world is coming from the same psyche of somebody who indebted or who had slaves and yeah. didn't have heart, they didn't have humanity, and they put those things across board everywhere. Yeah. You know? So you have to take everything from you, and then when they finish, they dump you somewhere. And we say that those are the standards. Those are not the standards. Lack of humanity. Yeah. You just pay people like <laughs> even if you come two minutes late, I take it from your money. That's yeah. because then they were forced to even pay people because they were they had people who had to work for them for free for years. Exactly. And the first thing is not say managing people. 
What do you think they will do to them? Exactly. Exactly. You know? But you and know what they say? Do that. You say the thing is that in Ghana, for instance, mm. the white people were not everywhere. Mm. They were not everywhere. They didn't even enter us until up until 1900 or somewhere. They were not everywhere. You know, so they, they are start of management. It's not spread everywhere in Africa. No. Exactly. You see, well, exactly. Maybe just in the cities. And they didn't even did, do a lot of the atrocities in terms of managing people to work for them in the fields uh, in Africa like that, you know. So our understanding of work and management is not from that uh, exactly. position. So what I'm understanding is that we need to um, we need to have our own game and with our own rules instead of, of playing in someone else's game and they yeah. make the rules and it's their game. Yes, because if you come to Ghana, for instance, and you are building business and you bring those standards here, you mm. fail. Exactly. Exactly. You fail. You, you will, the people won't work with you. Mm. That's why the sporans, when they come and they say, this is how you do it here. Okay, no problem. They will listen to you, but they go and do what they want to do. And you say, now oh, the people are not truthful. It's because you're not able to communicate exactly. with the people from their level. Exactly. Because you think that there's a certain standard somewhere. It does not work here. So you really have to get into the culture and get into the minds of the people. You know, exactly. because if you go to China, you work as to how Chinese work. But when you come to Africa, you want us to work as, as if we are in the West. It doesn't work like that. It's yeah. a whole different continent with different culture. You know, we have our own negatives. We have our own bad situations. We are not saying we are perfect. No, never. But what we will not want to respond to will be trying to judge us with the West. You know, okay. and, and that doesn't work. There are a lot of multinationals who have come here and have had to run away because they thought it, they could just impose, uh, superimpose their structures here and it will not work. This is an economy which is driven not by credit. You know, it's cash. In one economy, they give them credit, they say, go and buy. Here, the person must work before they come to buy. Mm -hmm. The structures are not the same. Your selling points are not the same. Your pricing is not the same. The way you manage the people is not the same. The government infrastructure is not the same. It's exactly. Entirely. And if you want to succeed in that, then you must understand how things work here. Exactly. Or you will not. Exactly. And by the way, in the Caribbean, we also, um, we don't work with mortgage and those kind of things. So most of the houses that you see that over there, they are mm -hmm. all cash paid for and built. So um, mm -hmm. for the Caribbean people coming to the Netherlands and Europe and see this kind of things, mortgage, everyone thought, hey, how is this? You know, everything is bought and paid for over there. So I understand you a little bit. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a completely other world mm -hmm. with other rules. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the last statement. Check the last statement. Let's see. Mr. T has responded to something. I would want to uh, comment on that. Yes. OK, so um, uh, I'm saying people selling on the street are usually under um, unemployed. I bet you the majority of them uh, would I'm not sure about this. Okay. Well, let me, read it. let me read it. Mochi T. All I'm saying, people selling on the streets are unusually on the ramp on the employed. I bet you the majority would prefer to have a steady income. The govern the govern the GFTS could do more by providing small loans too. These are people who are looking to build their own businesses. They are not looking for jobs. Mm. Majority of them, they will need maybe government support to expand their businesses. Mm. But more of these guys are not looking for loan and um, um, salary. That's what I can tell you. A lot of them have gone to work and they will come back because of how much they see on the street. Mm. There's a difference between how somebody who is an entrepreneur thinks and somebody who fees on salary thinks. They are not the same. And an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter how, how little the business is, the psyche is the same. An employee, it doesn't matter how much the, the salary is, the psyche is the same. They look for comfort. They look for safety. Entrepreneur takes risk. And this, most of these guys on the street, they take risk. All right? So if, you, if, if there's any help, and which I agree, is maybe the government can give them loans to support and to expand their businesses. But they are not looking for a job. That's what I can tell you. Yeah. Majority of them, you can't control them. 
Exactly. Exactly. No, the satisfaction is not just in money. Some of them would want to have their own say. <laughs> and in Ghana, if you don't know, there is there is this spirit of ownership in Ghana. Mm. I'm telling mm. you, where people yeah. want to own, they want to own their houses, they want to own their cars, they want to own their businesses. So when they work with you, they are still looking at how can I build my business. Exactly. Don't forget that. Exactly. But if you go to this is also what I've seen that um, the Ghanaian, they are really, they are entrepreneurs. You know, they want to do something. They really want to do something to um, to grow. So this is what I've seen that um, they are they are ready to go. They are ready to go. So you're right. Okay, let um, let's um, okay, guys and girls. We have been now two hours with Mr. Kwabena Oben Darko. It was really a good, a good um, life. I really liked it. And the next time we will go further, but we will go a level higher, right? So um, everyone, if you have um, some questions, because I think everyone have heard it and for the next one next show we will ask more and we will bring it to a level that everyone will really really like so subscribe like and turn on all the notifications and go follow mr kwabena obeng darko this guy as you know you have heard he knows what he's talking about he knows exactly what he's talking about and he can teach every diaspora a lot. Just go and ask him his questions. So, Mr. Kwabena Obeng Darko, thank you for being over here. And do you have one more thing to say to everyone? <coughs> yes. So, um, I want to say uh, thank you so much uh, for, for, for the opportunity uh, to talk uh, with your team, with your people. And uh, it's an honor that Africa is for all of us, that we all must own. Uh, all, the responsibility is, is on us to build our continent, you know, so that others will not be the ones in charge of our prosperity. So those of us on the continent, those of us spread everywhere, it's our responsibility. Even if you don't want to live here, no problem. But the prosperity, we can all own it. And it starts with a conversation. Maybe 20 years back, we could not have this conversation. Now we are talking. We are getting to know ourselves. Those who want to uh, create businesses is open. When you come and you meet frustrations, frustrations are everywhere. We are all building together, you know, and we need people to create uh, opportunities for everybody, you know. So you're, you're, uh, uh, um, the man is saying that, are you serious that the average Ghanaian prefer to sell things than to have a job with benefits? What job with benefits? This is Western kind of thinking that we are talking about. We are not Which looking one? for work, work with them. We want to create wealth. The man, uh, Muchi, Muchi T, uh, you know, job with benefit, I mean, I don't know. Then I, the last but four. We are not looking for job with benefit. That's a fact. Majority of our people would want to own cocoa farms and houses and businesses. Okay? Yeah. Jobs, no problem. It's a starting point. And it's okay if they want to have job. But majority of them, I bet you, I know what I'm talking about. We employ guests, okay? Once they come, they are looking for, how do I start mine? <laughs> They're not looking there to work with you forever. That's a fact, okay? You maybe get maybe 30% of them would want to work with you. But majority of them are looking to better their lives and to own and to control. This yes, is sir. how Guinness and Africa all over, go to Nigeria and see, it's the same. They want to control. So uh, this idea of job with benefits, maybe. If they have a lot of education, they will think like the West. But if they don't have a lot of education, they're looking at ownership. Okay, my grandfather never went to school. He was never in school. He was a transporter. He owned his own uh, truck. He had his own orange farm, cocoa farm, sheep, uh, goat. In his 90s, when he was old, he had stock sand on his land mm. that when he got old, he was selling the sand 
the son that we used to build, the son mm. that we used to build, mm. he was telling it to people to take care of himself. He never so, went to school. He never died poor. And yet we have a lot of highly educated people who died poor. The wet creation in our culture is different. The only thing that came to destroy it is the Western kind of education. Okay? Exactly. That's why we, when you go to a lot of our villages, you see big buildings built by cocoa farmers, our forebears, our grandfather, grandparents. A lot of them go to a lot of our villages, especially when they come to the Asante area. Big houses everywhere. They never work for the government. They didn't steal money to build those things. They were they did not work with benefit. They they built their own cocoa farm. Big huge. They were worthy. They controlled their work. And I think that's what we have to do. The school is good with the English and with the math and with the reading. No problem with that. But to create wealth because you have gone to school, no. And that's why majority of uh, people, once they get big, big government position, they lose their values. That's why they, the corruption is high, because they don't know how to make money. All right? Because when you go to school, they don't teach you how to make money. But when you go down, they create their own wealth. They don't steal. All right? And this is what most of the guys on the street, this is how they think. They think ownership. And that's why we have to let a lot of our people uh, know. And they work hard. Go to a lot of our market and see the market women there, they control millions. If you want five hundred thousand dollars, they will they will give it to you the next day. One million dollars, they will give it to you. They cannot even write your name. All right. Yes. So <laughs> and yet go to the one with the lawyer, doctor. He has nothing. Exactly. Because but money. you know what yeah, I've seen right. is um it 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 needs like the works with benefit. Um, I don't think that the same system applies to Ghana. Because why? Like when I was over there, I got some food poisoning, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went to the hospital, a really nice hospital, looks high, really clean, nice, everything. I thought that when the bill would come, that it would cost like, three hundred dollar four hundred dollar those kind of things but when the bill came it was 101 cd for good service within two hours i was feeling great again and leaving the hospital so i think that it does it's not the same system so all the benefits and all those kind of things that uh, you can get over here you don't need them over there mm. this is but what i that, believe you know but in that benefits and all those things they are coming to an end exactly a lot of things are coming to an end exactly you think that the government is borrowing all those monies eventually they will they will collapse it will crash yeah it will crash Mo you most will have this benefit on themselves because why it's coming down it was not designed to to, to work forever so people must be responsible of their own wealth. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And that's how we, we think like, like that. And if uh, if uh, every guy is working, how many people even sell on the street? If you look at the, the youth, how many sell on the street? We have millions of youth. How many on the street? Very few. The rest are working somewhere. Yeah. You know? But they, we would want to describe our people with that. And uh, that is so much... Uh, far from the truth, you know. So they need help. If you want to help them, give them more capital to start their business. The other day, I picked one guy. I gave him money to say that go and expand your business. He sells on the street, and I, yeah. I gave him that go and do something. Go and create another thing. Put it there. So between the the, the, the hot hour hours, you can you know go and stand at your shop, and then maybe when he's in the evening, you can come on and stand on the street. I don't think that what he's doing is wrong. I don't think so. If he gets right information, he can build wealth from there, with the little school that he has. And there are so many of them who have done that. You know, or even the truck driver. If he has good information on money, he'll be able to build. I have a friend, I have a boy who is a barber. Mm. He's, he's farming cocoa out of his barber business. He's building cocoa farm. And yet there are lawyers who have nothing. When it comes to money, it has nothing to do with salary and certificates. It has a lot to do with what you know about money and how you apply them. Long-term wealth 
It has nothing to do with certificate. It has everything to do with the, what you know about money and what you're working towards them. And that's what the educated people in Africa or all over the world don't know. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, guys and girls, um, it's now time. We, uh, me and um, Corbena Obengdarko, we can speak for hours, for <laughs> hours. Like, but we will do it the next live stream. So, guys and girls, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And if you did not like, like this video. Like this video and turn on all the notifications. Guys and girls, I see you guys in the video of tomorrow. My thoughts on everything and Kwabena Obeng Darko out.